Hello, everyone. Welcome to our lesson two of our subject English for twenty first century literature from the Philippines and the world. So, actually, class, we have arrived at the first unit of our book. Which begins with excerpts of pre-colonial literary production from various parts of the country. It's articulated in, you know, region's native language. So, pre-colonial literary forms were written in a variety of languages, and in the past, information was passed down orally before any other. Country,、um, you know, develop its own writing system, right? So, proverbs or sayings,、um, myths or legendary stories, riddles, fables, and songs were among the oral literary genre produced during that time. Okay, so in this lesson, everyone,、um, the proverbs and riddles that、uh, we are going to talk about. Has its equivalent English literary writings from the West,、um, which are identical actually in structure and content, but they differ mainly in、um, linguistic presentation. Okay, all right. Let's proceed. So、um, these are our objectives for this lesson. So first of all, you're going to differentiate or compare. And consists of various proverbs and riddles, citing their elements and structures, and then appreciate, of course, the cultural and aesthetic similarities as well as the diversity of proverbs and riddles across multilinguistic regions of the nation, and then use critical reading strategies to make sense of literary meanings and contexts, and of course, create a proverb and a riddle, and that's actually your、um, first two. Uh, performance has now for this first quarter. Anyway, let's go over now to our first topic, which is proverbs. Okay, so everyone, do you have an idea on what proverb is? Okay, I'm sure you guys、uh, know some of the most popular proverbs.、Mm-hmm. Okay.、Um, For instance, the proverb "Don't judge a book by its cover."、Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you know that one. You have heard that proverb even when you were still in elementary, right? And when you say "Don't judge a book by its cover,"、um, it only means we should not judge someone or something by appearance alone. Okay, yeah. So that's just one of the many. Uh, popular proverbs that we have known, and I'm sure that this lesson will be,、um, you know, familiar to you. Okay, let us define proverb. Okay, everyone. So when we say proverb, that is salubicain in Filipino, and it comes from the Latin term proverbium, which is composed of roots、uh, pro instead of and verbum, which means words. So Proverbs or salubicain,、uh, they are actually short but meaty sayings prescribing accepted norms of behavior, and they contain traditional wisdom from the past. Okay, so they actually indicate what makes people human. All right, so proverbs play many roles in the society. Everyone, the first,、um, possibly. Most common role that a proverb plays is to educate or to give advice to people. Okay, and proverbs can also inspire someone in need of a kind word and help them make decisions for their lives. So proverbs actually、um, gives morality, truth, wisdom, friendship, loyalty, and others. So those are values that are glorified with the、uh, the use of these proverbs. Okay, so <laughs> excuse me for the background noise. Okay, so for these wise、um, sayings to be easily remembered, they must not only be meaningful in content, but they must create impact through the way they are worded. Okay, so. 
Um, let's go over to the literary selection uh, from our book. Uh, by the way, uh, before we go over to some examples of the proverb, I have a question to you first. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you think is the difference between a proverb and a saying? In, in Filipino language, no? Proverb began, that's salobikain. And saying, or sayings, no? It is kasabihan. All right? In Filipino language. Okay. So, yeah. Think about it, class. What do you think is, the, you know, the difference? Of the two because they are actually very similar no they talk about truth wisdom values about human experience as usually yeah but they also have difference mm -hmm. okay so okay let's go over now no. so basically as what i have mentioned no uh proverbs uh you know needs to to have you know great impact their wordings the structure on how it is expressed you know, to be really catchy for us okay um what he read for the saying sayings actually are short um concise and they are commonly known expressions which generally offers advice or wisdom so they also refer to as an adage uh, and the saying is something that was said in the past and has become popular to be often repeated in daily life of common people. Okay, so uh, again, no sayings are usually aphorism. Uh, saying actually, I mean, proverb class. That's actually a saying, a form of saying, no, just like um, aphorisms, maxim, and then a judge like that. Um, and again, when we say saying, you know, usually it's short and direct, okay? While proverbs, they are more figuratively expressed and it is often structured, okay? So in other words, class, no, uh, as, what I, as what I have mentioned, um, a proverb is also a saying, okay? So in other words, all proverbs are basically sayings, but not all sayings are proverbs. So I hope you get it, class. Okay. Now let's proceed to our literary selection from the book. Okay, so we have here, um, the first part is, uh -huh. okay, we have here the English proverb, on the golden rule, no? So, which is, do not do unto your fellow man what you do not wish done to you. I'm sure you have heard this, you have heard this one already. Mm hmm Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. So, we have here um, some equivalent dialect for this English proverb. So, in Tagalog, it is ang masama sa iyo, huwag mong gawin sa kapwa mo. In Cebuano, dilik mo pagbuhaton ngadto sa upan, ang alang kanimo dautan. And then we have from Imongo, kan akun ano ang ginbuhat mo, amo man buhaton sa imo. Alright? And then for, from Bicol, um, kung ano ang maraot sa imo, dai mo gibuhon sa iba. Okay. So, even if I don't uh, really understand some of the words in the long run, we call, but I'm sure that um, it's just the same meaning, you know, to the English proverb that we have here in letter A. No, do not do unto your fellow man what you do not wish done to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, if you notice no, in the first um, proverb in English, and then uh, letter A. So the first, uh, it's divided into two parts, right? No. Uh, the first part is do not do unto your fellow men. Okay. And then the second part is do not, uh, what you do not wish done to you. All right. So 
Um, the first part focuses on fellow men class, if you notice that one. And then the second part focuses on the person being addressed. All right. But if you notice, um, both parts are worded in negative since they use do not do or do not wish. So there is not in there. No, that's negative. So that is actually to emphasize what should not be done by us people. Okay, yes. Uh, and if, if we are going to compare it to the other dialects here in our country, um, in Tagalog, no, they are similar. No, It has a um, negative connotation that you should not do that one. Diba, huwag mong gawin sa kapwa mo. The same goes with the Cebuano. Diba, dili mo pagbuhaton nga sa uban. Ang alang kanimo, da utan. And, and, um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, and for Ilonggo, actually, uh, I'm not pretty sure with the meaning of, you know, some of the words, but I think for Ilonggo, it, it's more of kanang positive. Kung ano ang ginbuhat mo, yeah, ginbuhat, probably that's buhat, no, in Bisaya. Amo man buhat sa imos. It's like, uh, what you will do to, um, to others will also be done to you, something like that. Mm -mm. But in Bicol, I'm pretty sure that is, you know, um, negative because I know maraot, though maraot is something that is kanang bati, di ba? Sa ato apa in Bisaya. All right? And then, dai mo gibuhun sa iba. Okay. So, by the way, class, um, a proverb can be imperative or descriptive. Okay? Imperative or descriptive. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And when we say imperative class, uh, that means um, it's a, it, it's in the form of um, command or request, okay? And when we say descriptive, so that is describing, okay? So, if I'm going to ask you, which among these um, proverbs, you know, in different equivalents, in, you know, dialects, and even in English, um, which one is descriptive? So I want you to think about that one. Which which one or which are descriptive in form? Okay. Okay. So basically, class, um, in this example, no, the descriptive proverbs are the Tagalog, Ilonggo, and Biko. Okay. While the, you know, imperative in form is English and Cebuano. Okay. All right. But anyway, if I'm going to ask you, which do you find more effective in communicating its intended meaning? Is it the imperative or descriptive? And why? Okay, think about it. <laughs> All right. So actually, class, both the imperative and the descriptive are effective. Okay? And they are actually very effective in, in its own way. Uh, probably also depends on the meaning, you know, that that the proverb wants to imply, okay. But if you are going to ask me, probably um, uh, for me, I find it imperative more to be, I mean, imperative form to be more effective because it's it specifies what must be done and what results if we carry out the command, <laughs> something like that. Okay, yes, now let's proceed to some other examples from our book, okay. Yes, so we have here, daig ng maagap ang masipag. Okay, and um, this is in the Filipino form, right? And it has its, you know, English equivalents. 
All right. So th there are three English equivalents for this um, Filipino salawikain. No? So the first one is a stitch in time saves nine. Another one is do not put off for tomorrow what you can do today. And then the early bird catches the worm. Okay. Right. So business wise class. So I'm going to ask you now. How valid is the early word catches the worm? Or can you say uh, this, you know, um this proverb alone? <laughs> okay. So if you are going to, to think about it you now in business, for instance, it's valid. Now, business-wise, because if, for example, an entrepreneur comes early to sell his or her goods, he or she may not have uh, yet, I mean, he or she may not have yet have many competitors who are selling. So they're, you know, wares too, and customers may still have enough money to spend. Yes, if you are early. But if you're not, then you will... Uh, you know, lost customers, <laughs> okay, something like that. And I guess that's that's really relatable to your class, right? So because if you if you are late in the class, you might miss some of the important um, discussions or topics made by the teacher or during the classwork, or I mean, during classes, you might miss the activity. So it's really better to be early, okay? So even if, if you notice class in its structure, even if they they are presented in a different way, yes, the, the first English equivalent is teach in time, like you're teaching. No, it's like if um, if a certain cloth has its you know it's damaged, so actually boost load. So if you immediately you know uh, sew it or stitch it, then of course did it magkadako, de ba? On a prevent nanhimo, okay. So as early as that. So it, um, the point here is, the earlier you um, you fix it, then you are going to to save uh, the clothing. <laughs> okay, that's a literal meaning, but you know uh, there is um, that's figurative, right? Okay. Same goes with the other equivalents here. Do not put off for tomorrow what you can do today. Yes. If you can um, make or create your performance task today, if you're not that busy, then you will be more relaxed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you can definitely do it today. Um, that is basically to avoid cramming, right, students? <laughs> That's for the second equivalent in English. And then the early bird catches the worm. Yeah, especially when it comes to business, no? Okay, let's go to letter C of our literary um, selection. So letter C, the English translation of these proverbs in Bicol. Uh, yeah, so we have here the presentation of the proverbs in Bicol dialect, Cebuano and Tagalog. And then they have equivalent proverbs in English. All right, so the first one is in Bicol. Uh, it's stated here, Putosan mo man an amo sa bulawan Amo man giraray. All right. So I don't really understand some of the words here used. But anyway, thanks to the English translation. So we have here, you know, English equivalent to that proverb. And it says here, wrap a monkey in gold. He will stay a monkey. Okay. English translation, English proverb, wrap a monkey in gold. He will stay a monkey. So it's just the same, no? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we have the Cebuano. Unsa ang tao maila sa iyahang binuhatan? That's in Tagalog also, makilala sa gawa ang totohan ng dakila. And then they have their um, English translation, which is a man is known by his action. And in English proverb, by their fruits, you shall know them. Okay. All right. So, um, do you understand class the meaning that uh, the meaning of the pro proverbs in here? All right. Mm -mm. 
You understand? <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty sure that you guys, if I'm going to ask you if you agree with this one or not, I'm sure that you will, you know, agree somehow. <laughs> okay. So it's like, by their fruit, you shall know them. Agree ba taan ang proverb? For example, no? Kanan sa Subwan o Tagalog. Okay, so basically it means you know, the words said and the actions done will reflect on what kind of a person you are. It's just like saying every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Yeah, it's just very, you know, similar to that. Okay. Okay, so what's more important is... Um, you will show yourself to the people in a way on, you know, just be true to yourself, siguro. Okay, ganda. One of the pinaka, ka, you know, best way on how to uh, translate these proverbs. Okay? All right, plus. So, I hope that um, you will recall some of your learnings or some of the proverbs that you have known in English, in Philippine language, or probably in uh, Visaya, okay? Because when we are going to have our face-to-face -face class, then I will be giving you activities of some of the proverbs, and then I'm going to let you identify the meaning of it. Or, or balisiguro, like I'm going to provide you the, the meaning, and then try to identify what proverb it will it be? <laughs> okay, all right. So that's it for the proverb. We will continue our discussion about riddles in the next video. Okay, all right. Thank you, everyone.